Here in the malt shop, our cool server can deliver a shake at just the right speed to his customer. The shake slows to a stop due to friction between the bottom of the glass and the countertop. We can manipulate the top right graph to see where the cup is at any point during its journey. This graph tells us the position of the glass as a function of time. Notice that the slope of the graph is high at the beginning and smaller at the end. This is because the slope of a position versus time graph represents velocity and the velocity is decreasing. When the slope is zero, the cup comes to a stop. The velocity is decreasing because the cup is accelerating leftward as it slides rightward. This means, thanks to Newton's laws, that there must be a net leftward force acting on the cup. The cup feels no rightward force as it slides. It does feel a leftward force. This leftward force is kinetic friction. The greater the kinetic friction, the more rapidly the cup will slow to a stop. If we look at the graph at the top left, we see the velocity as a function of time. The velocity can start out high or low. The area of this triangle is a distance traveled. When this area equals the position of the customer, the cup will arrive at just the right spot. In general, an object's displacement in space is equal to the area bounded by its velocity versus time graph. The slope of velocity versus time graph represents the acceleration. Notice that the slope is constant and negative. This means the force acting on the cup is constant and leftward. Again, this force is kinetic friction. What kinds of things affect the amount of kinetic friction the cup experiences? Does kinetic friction depend at all on initial speed? No. The slope stays the same no matter the initial speed. Does kinetic friction depend at all on the area of the base of the cup? No. The area doesn't matter. Isn't that surprising? Does kinetic friction depend at all on the mass of the cup? In fact, it does. However, we don't notice the effect in the slope of the velocity graph. Why is that? Well, the force of kinetic friction depends directly on the strength of the contact force between the cup and the countertop. So more massive cups feel more kinetic friction. However, the acceleration experienced by the cup depends inversely on the mass of the cup. This is Newton's second law. These two effects cancel. Does the surface type matter? Absolutely. The rougher the surface, the more kinetic friction force it can apply, and the more rapidly the glass will slow down. Kinetic or sliding friction is ultimately a microscopic phenomenon. It is no surprise that many of our assumptions about it are counterintuitive. Play around and see what you discover.